Paul Begley is a pastor, speaker, and a prophecy teacher. His most recent project is a page-turning new novel based on real-life events chronicled in the book of Revelation, and he joins us to tell us about the coming apocalypse. Welcome Great to, to the be Harvest here. Show. Thank you, Valerie. Okay, so before we get into this coming apocalypse and, and your new novel, tell us about your, your ministry. I mean, you, you are everywhere. Well, you know, I've been preaching 31 years mm -hmm. and uh, preached in every church and, and evangelized all over. Mm -hmm. Helped my father in his church. He pastors in Knox, Indiana. But uh, uh, our ministry in the last five years, we went on social media. Mm -hmm. I was asking God where to go to preach. I was saying, Lord, where do you want me to go next? <laughs> he said, YouTube. In mm -hmm. prayer, YouTube. I said, what's YouTube? I heard the... <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I heard all the young people talk about YouTube, so I get a computer and I find it, and there's some lady with green lipstick, and there's all kinds of people. And I said, God, you sure? Am I hearing you? And But after I got in and looked at it, the Lord said, I want you to get a cup of coffee, sit down at the kitchen table with the viewers, and talk about current world events mm -hmm. and how they relate to Bible prophecy. And I began doing that on a daily basis, and then it just exploded. So uh, I would say... We're there, and we just now started our television ministry here at Let's See a few weeks ago, so uh, it's just been growing. So God hasn't left the building, but he's definitely on YouTube. He's definitely <laughs> on YouTube. Just got to scoot in there and make a little room. But, uh, and what's unbelievable, it's, a, it's a, just like anything else, it's a, it's a highway of people. Sure. Mm -hmm. Hungry souls, curious about what's going on in the end times. Wanting to know, you know, what's going on. That's number one question. How much long, longer do we have? Right. And we're seeing people saved constantly uh, in our live Internet program. We went to an Internet program. We do it three hours every day talking about current events and then mm -hmm. Bible prophecy. So I do that besides the YouTube videos. So. Well, that's been the number one question for, oh, 2,000 years or so is <laughs> when are the end times coming? Uh, so what do you tell people? Well, I tell them, I say, look, you're, we're truly living in what I would call the last day church, okay, the latter days. Nobody knows the day nor the hour that the Lord's coming back. But certainly, uh, take a look at these signs that are going on around us. The, the, just like Matthew 24, you know, we got the wars, the rumors of wars. Israel's certainly God's timepiece. Uh, and with everything evolving in the Middle East with ISIS. But then we have all these other things. Earthquakes are increasing, volcanoes typhoons, not that we haven't had them before, but the intensity has really picked up and people understand there's something going on. We're getting closer uh, and they need to take a look at their lives. Okay, so pastor, when we say the word apocalypse, mm -hmm. what exactly do you mean by that? I, well, you know, the word apocalypse is a Greek word. It means revelation. Mm -hmm. So the coming revelation, uh, the apocalypse is viewed a lot of times as something uh, catastrophic. Mm -hmm. You know, the zombie apocalypse, and then you got, you know. <laughs> but in reality, it's, it's, it's the revelation of Jesus Christ. And there are going to be a lot of events that are going to be taking place just before he comes. And what we're trying to do is share with people, take a look at what's going on around you on a daily basis, mm -hmm. and realize that we are coming closer and closer to the coming of Christ, the coming apocalypse. Now, this book, uh, Jerusalem Jihad, that you have mm -hmm. authored, you, you come right out and you say, this is a work of fiction, right? but it's based on real life events. It really is. And, and I take current world events on a daily basis and then apply it to biblical prophecy and then put a story together based on a dream I had when I was in Jerusalem and uh, use that to set the scenario. I had a very vivid dream in 2013 while in Jerusalem that inspired me to write that book. Um, and it is without question. Uh, there are many nations surrounding Israel. This new Iranian nuke deal has got Benjamin Netanyahu, Prime Minister of Israel, very upset, right on edge. Mm -hmm. uh, it's controversial right now in our country, we know. But at the same time, it seems like the Psalms 83, it's like the nations are beginning to surround Israel. Mm -hmm. And uh, I felt led to write a book based on a family living in Jerusalem in the time of a great jihad attack, which is based on Zechariah 12, Zechariah 14. So it's biblically prophesied, but playing out in the novel. There. So tell us about this dream you had. 
Yeah, I was in Jerusalem and uh, I had a dream and I actually seen Israel coming under attack. Three cities, Tel Aviv, uh, Jerusalem and Haifa. And there were bombs falling and there was chaos in the streets. And uh, it was as if Israel was to the point that you thought they were going to fall in the dream. But then the Lord stepped in in a mighty way. And again, Israel won tremendous battles. Um, and it was, it was right the time that the third temple was about to be built. So, uh, and we see a lot of that going on, a lot of conversation that I can tell you. Uh, I mean, I met with rabbis and I can tell you they're pushing for the building of this third temple. It's prophesied in the Bible. So the dream was so vivid. I just felt, I went to the waiting wall right after I woke up that morning, early that morning, I went to the waiting wall and just prayed. And then uh, I even did a YouTube video and just explained the dream. Mm -hmm. uh, and then felt led to write the book. Okay, so when you read Jerusalem Jihad, you know, when viewers read it, what's the takeaway? It's not just enough to know, oh, this is, you know, uh, this is in the Bible, or this is what's happening in our real world. I mean, what is this message going to do for people? Uh, it's a great question. The, mm -hmm. the, what it's going to do for people is bring the awareness and the reality that life is frail. Mm -hmm. Life for any of us and all of us. And that just about the time you think that everything is stable and consistent, it's about to change. And people need to begin to take an inventory of their lives and ask themselves, am I ready to meet the Lord? Whether I live tomorrow, whether I die tomorrow, or whether the Lord comes back for the bride, am I ready to meet the Lord? Mm -hmm. And the book will lead them to salvation. It will lead them to the realization that the time we're living in, very important. You know, we opened the show talking somewhat about the American political system in the upcoming election. What kind of role does that play in the end times? Tremendous. I really want to say that this 45th president is going to play a major role in end times. There's even a, uh, a rabbi in Israel in 2006 who made a prophecy. His prophecy is that the 44th president of the United States would bring about potential chaos upon Israel, but that the 44th plus one president would undo it. Now, this prophecy was in 2006. Of course, no one knew who the, that President Obama would be 2008, so it wasn't mm -hmm. targeted at him. Yeah. And, it wasn't, and it was not explained exactly what would be the deal, but I believe it's the Iranian nuke deal that was in this prophecy is now in a point where it may have to be reversed by the 45th, who knows? Mm -hmm. But uh, these are some of the political things. I, I can tell you it's a fascinating race watching what's going on with sure. Donald Trump and everybody else. I mean, you, you mentioned it earlier in the show. Right. Um, and I don't know where it will wind up, but I believe God's hand will be in it and the person selected will be by the hand of God. Pastor, what do you say to the naysayers? I mean, I've heard my grandmother say it, my mother say Jesus is soon to come. Her mother said Jesus is soon to come. What's that one thing that makes it so different at this very moment that we're living in this time? That's a great question. I think it's the sense of urgency. Mm -hmm. our, uh, I can say uh, my online church, the people who come every day and watch our daily show during the day, we're getting over 2,000 people every day online. And I'll interact with them chatting. And this will be the number one question. How much longer do you think we have? Mm -hmm. And they'll ask questions like, you know, so if Israel does this, or if, why was this sinkhole swallowed this car? Or do you believe that the earthquake is gonna hit San Francisco? There, the reason people are asking is there's things happening. Mm -hmm. Everywhere you turn, you know, there's constantly wars and rumors of wars, conflicts. So I believe that we're seeing an intensity. Another thing, the early church was extremely powerful in the book of Acts. People were saved, healed, delivered. The end time church will be just as powerful, if not more. And salvations, healings, miracles will happen. Okay, so I have 30 seconds. And I know you're a pastor, so <laughs> if you can answer this question. <laughs> For the person who's saying, you know, I want to get saved because I, you know, I'm afraid of going to hell. What do you say versus, you know, coming to faith in Christ because you love him? I mean, you do have people every time. When I was a little girl and I'd hear Jesus is soon to come, I'd repent. Lord, please forgive me because I didn't want to miss him. Right, right. But it wasn't based out of love. Right. What do you say to it? Uh, there's, it's a healthy balance is this. Okay. You have to, first of all, know who Jesus is in his loving grace and mercy. You have to know who he is, that he cares, and he's reaching out to you. But at the same time, the Bible says to fear the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. 
So you do know that this world will not last forever. Reality is it's coming to an end. And the question is, do you have him in your heart? Oh. And if, when you find Christ, you will not have fear. He said, I haven't given you the spirit of fear, but a love and power and a sound mind. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing your insight with us. To connect with Pastor Paul, go to paulbegleyprophecy.com or go to harvest-tv.com for a link to his new project, Jerusalem Jihad. And in just a moment, we'll be back with a very special birthday wish for someone who's very special to the Harvest Show. We'll reveal that mystery person in just a moment. 